We want to welcome you to Haynes Ministries. This is a Word in Due Season Bible study. And uh, I'm Steve, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Susan, tonight. And uh, tonight we're going to be going over part eight of our Sermon on the Mount series. And we're going to start by talking about fasting. But I think before we get started and go any further, I'm going to ask my wife to just open up with prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege to come together to study your word and that we might know your will for all of our lives, God. We pray that you would bless and anoint this Bible study to your glory. Lord, reveal spiritual truths to us by your Holy Spirit and your word that we might live a victorious life for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome live viewers. We want to welcome those of you that are watching the recording. Uh, before I get into the message, uh, I just want to point out that next Tuesday, May 10th, at 7 p.m. Central Time, we're going to have our next bi-weekly prayer meeting. You get your prayer request in. We have a, a website. It's just simply hangsministries.org. And you just mail in your, uh, or you can call, whatever, however you want to do it. And then uh, our next Bible study will be after that, which will be May 17th uh, at 7 p.m. Central Time. And tonight <clears throat> is Communion Tuesday. We're going to break bread and i want you to break bread with us and 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 we're gonna partake of the lord's supper and uh we always have communion on the first bible study of each month amen now if you weren't with us last time last time on part seven we we talked about what jesus had to say about prayer and it was actually uh we've Last week or last time was about an hour long. Uh, I hope it's not that long tonight. But uh, part six and seven uh, had to deal with prayer. The latter part of part six, all of part seven. So if you want to learn what how Jesus taught his disciples to pray, well, I suggest watching those. But or you could start with part one and just catch up where we are now. So last time we talked about what Jesus had to say about praying. Now tonight we're going to start talking uh, about what Jesus had to say about fasting. Now, in Matthew 6, 16 through 18 from the NIV, it says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men their fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen? Amen. You know, God... You know, there's a lot of a lot of you people watching right now as born again believers, and you've been following God for years, and and uh, you feel like you have had little significance in this life. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Many of you, when you get to heaven, you're going to share in a vast reward, Amen, for just things you've done here on earth. You know, you take you take a uh, a uh, Sunday or a children's church teacher uh, she may she or he may be in the background but all the time they're shaping and molding and, and helping to do that with your children amen to make mm -hmm. future uh, apostles prophets pastors evangelists and teachers and all those things so so just hang on uh we're just passing through this world we haven't got to the eternal one yet and uh, when we get there don't be surprised if uh god has more uh, rewards and you know what to do with amen but anyway jesus last time jesus was teaching on prayer now he's going to teach his disciples about fasting how many knows that prayer and fasting a lot of time will go hand in hand amen i go hand in hand when people fast they are doing without food and or drink for a certain time some of the purpose of 
purposes of fasting are so that they can spend more time in prayer and in God's Word. I believe when we fast, not only should we pray, but as we're fasting and praying, when we're not praying, we should be consuming God's Word. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, one time years ago, I uh, was reading the Bible a lot. I mean, even more than usual, I was reading the Word, and you know, I just wasn't hungry. And that scripture, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, it became more true during that period of time than it ever has been for me. But, you know, when you're fasting, yes, like Brother Steve said, you don't just fast just to quit eating. You fast to, to have that time, more time to dedicate to um, pray and to read God's Word. Amen. You know, then some people fast prayerfully for a situation to change or just to draw closer to God. Now, I know, did you want to share that time you fasted for that person years ago? or? Uh, um, okay, well, I mean, there were several times that I um, felt led to pray and fast on behalf of someone, you know, over the years. Um, uh, one time, uh, there was an individual that had, um, well, I don't know, that, I, um, that she had asked me to, to be in her wedding ceremony and, and come to find out she had already gotten married and she hadn't told anyone and, and um, I knew this guy she married wasn't a godly man and, I was, and she wanted me to, uh, to partake in her ceremony and I, I just didn't know what to do you know I wasn't I was sworn to secrecy not to tell anyone or or uh, so I was praying for direction I was a baby Christian I didn't really know a lot about the word and and I started praying I said God what do I do you know uh, should I be in this wedding even though I'm completely against who she married this was a very ungodly person she married and and she had anyway so uh, while I was praying and fasting, the pastor's wife called me on the phone and she said, God showed me that you're praying and fasting about so-and-so. And God showed me that she already got married. <laughs> and so, I mean, when you're praying and fasting about a situation, God can speak to other people and move on yeah. to other people too and, and, and give you an answer, you know. So anyway, so praying and fasting sometimes is, is um, when, when something's, you're up a creek and you really don't know what to do or which way to take or turn to take, um, sometimes that's a good thing to do is pray and fast. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> I know one time you was uh, fasting for someone and, and uh, it's like they were bound up. And, uh, oh, yeah. And the you saw uh, war in the heavenly. Yes, yeah, so one time I was praying and fasting for someone that was, I uh, really in bondage, you know, they um, were really having bad problems and really in a relationship that they didn't need to be in and and they had just gone back to it. And so I started, I felt like God told me to pray and fast for them. So I started praying and fasting. While I was praying and fasting, um, I was by myself, um, the place where I worked and nobody happened to be there that day uh, uh, during lunchtime. So I just just prayed and fasted during lunchtime and and all of a sudden God opened my eyes and it's just like when I was praying I saw that there was a warfare going on in the heavenlies and um, I saw the forces of good and the forces of darkness warring against one another and you know we call it spiritual warfare sometimes when we're praying and fasting and and God it was like God gave me a glimpse of what happens when we pray God does hear our prayer, and when we pray God's word, you know, the Bible says in the Psalms that, that it causes the angels of God to, to go forth and work on our behalf or whoever's behalf that we're um, praying for. And so God just let me have a vision, and I saw the forces of darkness and the forces of heaven warring against each other. The forces of heaven were winning. Amen. But, um, so... A lot of times when you're uh, praying and fasting, things are happening that you don't see. And um, Daniel prayed and fasted one time for an answer, and it took 
several weeks for his answer to come. And, and when the answer came, he, he asked, I think an angel appeared to him, and he asked yeah. the angel why it took so long. The angel said, well, I was sent out when you first started praying three weeks ago. But I was battling the yeah. um, battling Lucifer all the way, you know. So um, sometimes there's a time for praying and fasting and, and yeah. standing in the gap. Amen. But uh, you know, some of the things that uh, people obtain from fasting are that they can learn self-discipline, or to remind them that they can live with a lot less and appreciate what God has given them. Amen. Uh, Amen. In fact, in the Old Testament, it was mandatory for the Jewish people to fast at least once a year. And that was on the Day of Atonement. Although that was when they were commanded to fast, there, there were different times throughout the year that the Jewish people could fast individually or in groups while praying for certain requests. Uh, you know, like my wife was just talking about, both of us have fasted at times, and and you might be asking, well, how often should we fast? Well, you know, I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you how to do it, or but all I can tell you is for my wife and I, it's when we feel a leading from the Lord to do so. Amen. And, uh, you know, some people lead what they call a fasted life. Now, a fasted life, according to some, is merely just going without something to eat for a meal or, or two. You know, they might do this a time or two a week, or just however they may feel led to do. And, and during this time of their fasted life, they're seeking God, they're petitioning God, they're seeking an answer, they're, you know, there's no telling what they might be praying or seeking, but... That's another way that people fast. You know, they, they live a fasted life. They, they might fast a meal or two for a day. Or, but, but it's not so you can sit in front of the TV and watch Netflix and, and stare at YouTube all day. It's to be seeking God and in His Word and in prayer and all those things. Now, another thing I want everyone to remember is that not everybody is medically able to fast. Amen. Uh, for one, you take a, uh, if your blood sugar gets down to a certain level, you know, these diabetics, you know, they, they, they have to have something to eat, amen? Yes. Um, you know, for some it may be harmful to go without food for a long period of time, and, and it's certainly not good for someone to go without water uh, for more than two or three days. Uh, you know, if someone does fast more than three days, I would strongly suggest liquids amen and some people um, when they do fast they still drink liquids so they yes just don't eat food you know yes for heaven's sakes use wisdom and uh, years ago a friend of mine uh, wanted to fast but she was pregnant and she was on bed rest and so what she felt like so what she did she fasted tv you know for yeah. a certain amount of time and stuff and so i guess whenever you know your bed fast a lot too and don't have anything else to do. You're gonna watch a lot of TV. So she fasted TV because she couldn't. She didn't feel like it was wisdom for her to fast from eating. Yeah. And and I would say the same thing. Well, that, that's in my notes. Even I was getting ready to oh. say some of these options could be that you could fast that time on social media, uh, <laughs> or you could fast your favorite television program, like Susie was just pointing out. So you know you can. Uh, there's other ways to fast. And then know. other people dedicate the time. And um, I know a lot of full gospel people did away with that, but in the traditional church, uh, they had Lent season. Yeah. And people would fast between a, a period of time until like Easter. Yeah. And um, and so they would fast maybe chocolate or, or fast sweets or, or something like that, you yeah. know, for a period of time. And there, you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think that's good. I mean, if someone wants, feels like God wants them to do that, yeah. because you're doing, you're giving up something 
and replacing it with uh, more time with God or, or in the Word. Amen. And if you're, you know, your heart's in it and you feel led to do that, then certainly I believe you can commit that to God and do that. But whatever you may choose to fast, seek God with all of your heart. Amen. Amen. Now, just one more thing I'd like to add. As far as pregnant women go, remember you're you're caring for two. That's right. You know, you those little unborn ones need all those nutrients. Yes, and, they don't need to be fasting. Amen. So <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's that's wisdom and and can we go back just a minute, yeah. you know? Yeah, go and ahead. um we were talking about uh, when we first read out of Matthew six sixteen through eighteen you know, we're not going to fast to put on a show. Right. That's just between us and God. We don't even have to tell anyone we're fasting. And of course, a lot of times Amen. when you're committed to do a fast, all of a sudden all these people pop up out of the woodwork and ask you lunch that never do and stuff yeah. like that. So you yeah. might have to tell them if you don't have a choice. But God doesn't want you fasting to put on a show. This is to seek God with all your heart. That's like what the Pastor hypocrites Steve. did. You know. Yes. The hypocrites did that. They disfigured their faces to let everyone know how holy they were because they were fasting. But here, verse 17 of Matthew 6, But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. I heard um, I heard someone say one time as they were talking about women, you know, they said, wash your face and put on your makeup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, don't. Just go with, if you wear makeup every day, don't just go without it because you're fasting, you know. Just, yeah, these, just, these hypocrites would literally darken their faces, their countenance, and people would know, you know, they'd also sound oh, trumpets yeah. when they gave large sums of money <laughs> in the offering. You know, God, God, he's going to reward you. What we've done in secret and, you know, with a pure heart, he's going to reward you one day. Amen. Amen. Uh just just remember uh, uh don't be like the hypocrites you know they they uh they wanted people in in the public to 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 know that they were fasting they were looking for pu public recognition uh, don't make a show of it uh jesus commended acts of self sacrifice done quietly and uh, he commended acts of self-sacrifice done quietly and sincerely. Amen. What you do, do sincerely before God. Amen. That's right. Now, let's look at how some of these people were fasting. We'll, we'll go to Isaiah chapter 58. I've got 1 through 11 down, but we're going to, I think it's 1 through 5 we're going to read first. And, and that, this, this is man's kind of fasting. Man's kind of fasting. Isaiah 58, 1, it says, Shout it aloud, do not hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. And verse 3 says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, and in striking each other with wicked fists. These guys get into fist fights. <laughs> you cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable? To the Lord. Now these guys, you know, they were saying, "Hey, look at my religious act here." God, where are you? And then they were turning around saying, "God, how come you're not noticing?" <laughs> yeah, the public's noticing me, but not, where's God? You know, this is man's kind of fast. This is, you know, what lurks in religious people's hearts. 
you know, to act pious and holy and that, oh, my word, you know, uh, they're, they're ready to go preach the gospel and go to Africa and go here and go there, but yet they won't even walk across the street to tell their neighbor about Jesus, amen? And then they put on these shows of, of righteousness and all those things. Amen. You know, the Lord is not looking for an outward show of any kind, amen? That's right. Uh, remember in times gone by, we talked about hypocrites, the Greek word for hypocrite, and it literally meant one speaking from behind the mask and how we talked about in the Greek theater, the amphitheaters, in Jesus' day, how they spoke, the actors spoke from behind the mask, a smiley face and a frowny face to, to let the crowd know what frame of thought they were in. And uh, because of sound application isn't like what it is today, amen? And that would just give the audience uh, some kind of idea. So in other words, the one who spoke from behind the mask were actors. That's what Jesus is saying about hypocrites. You're putting on an act. They're acting. God forbid, amen? Uh, God forbid. But the Lord is not looking for any outward show of any kind. You know, do we go to church just to say that we've been to church? Are we whispering the name of Jesus on Sunday mornings and then yelling and cussing our neighbors the next? Oh, my. <laughs> Do some of us fast just to look religious? You know, God wants us to approach Him with all sincerity. Many are counting on a situation or circumstance to change. But don't be surprised if the thing that changes is in us first. Amen. How many is ready to look at the God kind of fast? Amen. We're going to find this from Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. Now God is getting ready to tell him about his kind of fast. Amen. In verse 6, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? How many of us stand in the gap for others? How many of us... You know, your next door neighbor that might be a drug addict or something. How many is going to break that old yoke in Jesus' name? Amen. Or, or just whatever. Or the yoke over your own life. Whatever it is. In verse 7 it says, Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard then when you call and the Lord will answer you will cry for help and he will say here am I if you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you sp spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness Hallelujah. and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always he will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Amen. Praise God. Do you live that kind of a fasted life or, or a fast in your life? I, I realize uh, many in America are talking about a financial crash and financial this and a financial that. Well, during the prophet's time, there was no rain upon the earth for three and a half years, and God literally sent the ravens with meat from the king's table to feed this prophet. Amen? Don't worry. We're not, not tonight, but the next time we come together, we're going to talk about worry, what Jesus had to say about worry. Amen? 
God is saying, don't, you know, hey, put me first. Amen. Amen. Can I yeah. read the rest yeah. of this? Yeah. I like verse 12, Go too. Ahead. And um, on in here. But, you know, God said we were going to be, like, when we fast and when we obey God and we're looking out for those in bondage and the poor, uh, then in verse 12, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. That means like someone might have lived in poverty for years, maybe not like physical poverty, but spiritual poverty. Uh, maybe they've lived in ne uh, negativity for years and you're going to bring them hope. You're going to show them a hope. Yeah. And and it says, And you should be called the repair of the breach, the restore of streets to dwell in. I just Amen. love that scripture. And it, and then it goes on to say, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, it's talking about fasting, but it's also talking about living for God every day, yeah. you know. And like maybe part of like what you said about living a fasted life, you know. Amen. From doing... Instead of choosing our own thing to do, sometimes we got to do it for God. Amen. We need to choose the path He's called us to. Praise God and put God first in Amen. everything. Hallelujah. Um, it says, Then call the Sabbath to delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor Him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. It. Praise God. You know, <laughs> when I, I, one reason why I, wanted to, I felt led of the Lord to teach from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew, from Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, you know, we talked about righteousness, and we, we talked about this, we talked about that, we talked about prayer, we're talking about fasting, uh, next time we're going to talk about worry and here in just a minute we're going to talk about money but um, you know Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray last time we taught you're going to find as you listen to our videos that a life of prayer and a life of fasting and a life of living for God is a way of life amen yeah we can give you a model of prayer but to live a prayer life is, is is a way of life to live. Amen. Yes, yes. It's a way of life. Amen. But, uh, you know, in Isaiah 58, the first part of the scriptures is, Hey, didn't you see this? God's getting their attention. You do this, then I will notice you. Amen. And, and bear in mind, you know, when we're talking about people parading their praying and fasting, we're not speaking against occasionally a, a pastor or minister will ask uh, different members of his congregation to volunteer to pray and fast for a coming revival they're having or something. Right. We're, we're not talking. And, and we're not talking against something like that, you know, by any means, Amen. you know. But um, so, and even in the Old Testament, um, was it King Hezekiah or um, different kings would call people to fast in the book of Esther. Uh, Esther called people to fast, you know, and and pray, seeking God, you know, for, uh, for about a situation. So, so it, uh, yes, most of the time it'll be, and it is between you and God still, and when God puts it on your heart. But there are times when a minister or pastor will ask for people to pray with them or fast with them about a coming revival or, or something that's going on. Amen. And yes. and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you no. know, people doing that. Fasting so. is like prayer, just don't do it to be seen right. of, of the right. public, to right. think oohs and ahs from the public, amen. Yes. You know, uh, before we take communion, I'm going to, uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk about money here, Matthew 6, 19 through 24. Jesus was teaching about money, and uh, then we'll have communion. And then the next time we come together, we'll talk about what Jesus has to say about worry. But in uh, Matthew 6, verse 19, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Now, don't take that in the wrong way, that you shouldn't have money in the bank or or uh, have a savings account, or have a 401k, or 
or anything. You know, don't let money be your God, is, you know, Jesus. Is, is that's what he's saying. Yeah. He's but trying in, to tell you to keep things in the right perspective. Right. We still keep God first regardless. Amen. But in verse 20 it says, But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Who's our God? Is it is it God, the Most High, or is it things and possessions and job and situate or uh, the position and power and all those things? Man, God wants us to serve Him. He He said all these things will be added to you if you, yes, you keep seek God after first. Me. Keep God first. Uh, you know, in these verses of scriptures, Jesus is teaching His disciples that there are two kinds of riches. The seen and the unseen, the earthly and the heavenly, one is temporal and the other is eternal. Um, you know, like I mentioned, first of all, I want to mention that having money is not a sin. You know, you got to remember, now of course, uh, with everything Jesus gave up in the splendor of heaven to come walk this earth, he, he became poor, you know. <laughs> Uh, but I also want to point out that there were those who would give in to, to the Lord's ministry. Now, and you're asking, what do you mean? Well, you know, if you remember, there were times when Jesus would give to the poor. You know, Jesus wasn't giving them dirt. He was giving them money. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Jesus was wealthy by earthly standards in, in any way, but I'm saying that he had money to give to the poor at times, God doesn't want you in your Christian walk to be destitute. I believe God doesn't even want you living payday to payday. Amen. I believe God wants you to have so you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. But the reason I say Jesus, you know, his ministry, people would get into his ministry and, and you know, when he had money, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus, he was the one that took care of the money bag. And uh, he, he, you know, of course, Judas would, would dip in there at times, you know, and, and take what he what he wanted. And like I said, um, having money is not a bad thing. Just don't let the money have you. Now, notice in verse 22 in Matthew chapter 6, it says that the eye is the lamp of the body. In other words, your eyes are the gateway to the mind of man. What are your eyes focused on right now? Are we looking to Jesus? Or is our focus set on gaining more and more wealth? Uh, you know, of course God wants us to work our jobs and he wants our bills to be paid. He, and he wants us to be responsible. He wants us to be families. responsible and take care of our family. And he, he wants us to have food to eat. The Lord even wants us to have nice things in life. Uh, God just doesn't want us to become so earthly minded that we are no heavenly good. Amen. When the Lord is prospering us, let's try to be a blessing to others. And remember to be a blessing to the house of God. And I, I, I used this verse of scripture last time, and, and it bears, it's worth repeating. Uh, 3 John 1 2. We, we read this last time, but I want to read it again. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper, may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul is prospering just as your soul prospers. Now your soul is prospering because you're seeking and serving God 
you're praying, you're fasting, you're spending time in His Holy Word. And uh, Jesus, you know, He said at times, those that love me is going to do what I say. Amen. Amen. So we're going to stop right there. Now, we're going to have communion. Don't touch that mouse. We're not quite through. We're going to have communion. Then I'm going to turn it over to Susie, and she's going to introduce this Jesus to you that, that we're uh, teaching on. Amen. Where you can know him in a personal way if you don't already know him. But uh, in uh, I want to read... Uh, well, before I get into verse 23, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 11. Before I get into the communion, I'm going to jump ahead and read uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 32. It says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks a cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep, which simply means some have died. Um... Uh, in verse 31 it says, But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned with the world. Now, everybody, if you're going to take communion with us, I want us all to examine ourselves. And, and, it, and you know, I'm pointing fingers at myself as well. You know, God wants us to to be to be right in right standing with him and and uh susie if you just pass the if you have juice and a cracker would well, please join us we're going to start in first corinthians 11 and i'm going to start with verse 23 it says for i received from the lord what i also passed on to you the lord jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread. And in verse 25, it says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. And finally in verse 26, it says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. I pray that you've been blessed by the word of God tonight. I know my wife and I have. And, and you'll want to Join us in two weeks. We're going to be starting part nine. We're going to start right off by what Jesus taught about worrying. How many of us has ever worried? You mean I'm the only one? No. I think we've all had some kind of worry. We're going to start right there. We're going to start in Matthew six twenty-five, and we're going to talk about worry. We're going to we're going to take it from there, and uh, you know, like I said at the start of the. At the start, that uh, if you want to contact us or, or leave a prayer request, please go to our website, which is HanesMinistries.org, and just uh, you can. There's phone numbers. There's a, a message, a place where you can leave, uh, send a message, and yes. send your prayer request or just whatever. We're, we want to pray for you. We want to hear from you. If you have a testimony, we want to hear about it Amen. too. Let us hear from you. Amen. So I think. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to my wife, and she's going to present this living Jesus to you now. So if you're listening today, and you want to ask Jesus to come in your heart and forgive you of your sins, you want to become a part of God's family. That's how God made a way. The Bible says that He makes a way where there seems none. You know, some of us, 
our sins have overtaken us and we feel like there's no way that we could ever be good enough to go to heaven. Well, there wouldn't be, except that God's so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to take your place on the cross and pay the penalty for your sins. And then he rose again from the dead on the third day and he's, he's, he lives. We have a risen Savior that we serve. And pray this prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. To make a way for me. To make a way for me. Where there seems like none. Where there seems like none. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That he died on the cross for my sins. That he died on the cross for my sins. And he rose again from the dead. And he rose again from the dead. So I can live a life of victory. So I can live a life of victory. For you. For you. Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I accept your gift of eternal life. I accept your gift of eternal life. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in faith believing... You are forgiven, and you are now a child of God. This is your new beginning. Get out God's holy word. Start seeing all the wonderful things that God has planned for you. And we'll see you again uh, two weeks from today. Amen. Be blessed. Yes. And don't forget to send in those prayer requests. And Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen.